this being the fifth the fifth one of this series of Iceman and Musters that this has been a, a an, another lovely eclectic collection of people uh, who are involved in innovative medical education and a lot of sessions, too many to go get to all of the ones I'd like to, um, but better that than wondering what you're going to do tomorrow sort of thing. So wonderful presenters, lots of really good discussion. Now any particularly interesting idea come to your mind in terms of community engaged education? Um, yeah, well, I, let's go back to the first keynote. So Rachel Elloway's keynote on scholarship in the context of social accountability. Um, as always, Dr. Elloway was wonderfully provocative um, and sort of very incisive and and um, constructively critical of a number of, of things about what we what we as medical educators do and I I loved her exhortation that we have to get to the why and will we be doing harm because I think there are a lot of people with a lot of good ideas but that it's rare that there's that sort of sense okay it looks like a good idea so we'll do it without kind of looking at well what might be the consequences of this or if it doesn't quite go the way we expect what would happen, you know, sort of trying to do some of that scenario building. Um, and that whole idea of values ideology. So if I look at <clears throat> community engaged medical education, um, clearly there are a lot of us that come to this with sort of value laden ideas. Um, and um, not a little bit of ideology, which is often not um, apparent. Um, it's often sort of hidden. And <clears throat> at times hard to have a very robust discussion about uh, community engagement. I think that, how should I say, Nazem has led the way in a number of places, but I would argue that throughout medical education in Canada, including NAWSM, that we've only just scratched the surface in community engagement. And if I look at some of the work and theories that I've been I've been involved in lately, there's there's this wonderful thread of thinking around institutions. Um, and that institutions can only serve institutions do not care it's individuals who care institutions can provide the environment in which individuals can care but we have gotten <clears throat> there are some um, in the community engagement world or the community development world who believe we've gone much too far in North America to believe that we can buy anything we need so we can buy care we can buy this we can buy that um, and forget that no that it's it's that um, human to human, heart to heart, one to one relationship that's about caring, and and I think that all of us involved in in uh, educating or in the education of uh, role modeling for coaching, mentoring new health professionals that we really have to come back to get a grip on what it is we mean about caring. And for those of us involved in these big institutions, be they health service delivery, medical schools or whatever, um, that we need to be there to be of service to what some call the natural sector. It's often called the informal sector, but um, some people want to um, re, uh, rename it the natural sector because most care happens individual to individual in the community and if we truly engaged with our communities building on their strengths what we as medical schools and as health delivery systems would do would be very different than what we do now that we it, 
it would be a rejigging, rejigging of our power and and privilege in a sense. So, what what came up in the um, plenary this morning with um, with Bjorg Pell's daughter uh, when we discussed the two key things um, around community engagement and when Dr. Elloway got up from our table and said we will need to um, change our power and privilege, we will need to change our power and privilege, we will need to change it. I mean, that, that's it, that, that our worlds have to change much more considerably than they have to this point. Well, there are different levels of institutions in some way, medical schools are more than the education size service delivery. How about the government? Yeah. <laughs> in, 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 in this pursuit for, for better community engaged education, what will be the, a, a newer relationship between the medical schools and the government? And the government. Which also uh, control, of course, the how how old he builds people or how true, old true. Well, I I would say that's a very complicated question, and I'm going to give you the beginning of what is a complicated answer. So, I fundamentally believe that if medical schools truly became community engaged, where the communities, as this conference said, were in the driver's seat. That government's relationships with medical schools would be changed radically. And I've said this in my own province, that the government cuts funds to universities, and that means to medical schools, they cut this or that. Most of our communities couldn't give a darn because we mean nothing to them. You know, in my province, north of the city I live in, which is two-thirds of the province, 80% of the doctors are international medical graduates. So what part of failure don't you understand? I mean, those, the people in those communities don't see us as doing much for them. And it's hard, it's very hard to talk about that in a medical school where there are very bright and very committed people doing you know, incredible research and looking into things that are going to make a difference for some people. But when you have two-thirds of the landmass of a province that doesn't have very good access to health care, period, that's not going to matter to them. And so what I keep saying is that if we can reorient ourselves and let the community into our medical school and have them work with us, to sort through how we can best serve them, then they're going to let those bright clinical and basic scientists do all these wild and wonderful things because we're working together and they know that they've informed and are part of the dialogue about what we're doing. Um, and in that context, then we become meaningful for them. Um, but as long as it's the medical school assuming they know what the community needs and just carrying on and saying all of these things are obviously we're doing them for the community. Well, I don't think government's going to look very favorably on us. Anything you want to add? I think that is a really great point already. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think I have anything else right now. I might tomorrow. It is always great to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what's interesting, because I, I, was, I meant what I said when we were walking down the hall. I had no idea what I was going to say to you, except that I know that when I sit down with you, I don't know what it is. You ask very good questions, but they're usually very straightforward and sim you know, simple. No, no, sorry, that's not true. Simply put, but complex. That's what it is. <laughs> Um, that always gets me, oh, God, yeah, I need to say that. Well, my fault is always that when I sit down in the editing, usually the film doesn't allow that kind of complexity. I, yeah, no, and, I, and I, yes, that's an interesting way of, from your, I've never been in your position of, of having to 
edit things. But I think I film. for the conference like this, I'm going to put everybody's interview separately, so it can can become a resource. Oh, interesting! It's so easy to put things on YouTube, uh -huh. unlisted, so so people can have access to it if they have the address. Uh huh. Uh huh. I must say, I, I will say one thing about the panel I was involved in today. Um, there were four of us who had been with Nozam at some point and have moved on. And um, what we'd taken with us from being involved here. Uh, and I think Lynn Wilson, who was the moderator, um sort of summed it up, because it was helpful for me in the same way, that it was almost a master class in medical education leadership, um, hearing our stories of times at Nozem and then what we've taken with us. And, you know, that that idea that you, you know, you sort of learn something in one place and then you, you work on building building on what you've learned somewhere else in a very different context and obviously you have to morph and and um, <clears throat> sort of somewhat change your ideas, engage different people, um, it's, oftentimes it's different kinds of communities but nonetheless there are some some important things you can take from one circumstance into another and one of them and I, and I hadn't really thought of this until I was sort of <clears throat> answering one of the questions, and I thought a lot about the question and thought I was going to say these certain things, although I didn't write them down because I never do because it always sounds too stilted. And I started thinking about one of the biggest lessons I learned here was in building programs, educational programs, which I hadn't really done. I'd done lots of other building programs, but not this kind of thing, where students or other people had to take a risk on something new that you had to be confident enough was really going to work right and i described that because i've taught i've thought about this a lot and i have talked about it with some of my friends and colleagues that um you know when the final moment comes like i the first time i really remember this was implementing the admissions process and so here's this new medical school, all of these people who'd applied, we'd chosen, or we'd sort of chosen a process, and we're starting. And I felt like I was just leading my group, and I had this wonderful admissions committee, people from all over Northern Ontario, um, who'd been really incredibly important to putting this whole thing together. Um, and I just sort of felt like I was kind of leading them over this cliff into an abyss. Um, and that I was pretty sure there'd be a soft landing, but I wasn't absolutely sure, right? And one of the women I worked with, her motto was prepare. Prepare relentlessly. And we had. We'd been through this, and well, what if that happens, and what if this happens, and we had all these contingencies. And things went pretty darn well. Um, given it was the first time. But I've been in those circumstances since, and I still find myself thinking, okay, it's going to feel like you're headed off into abyss, but you have prepared, and you have prepared relentlessly, and this is going to go okay. So in a sense, that's one of the big things that I took from here. Hmm. And having taken it, maybe last question, how would you? How would it change the way you do your job? Like when when people, what I'm asking really is, when we learn something from a conference, get us thinking about something in the conference. Does it really change the way we do our jobs? So that was learn that that was learning about me reflecting on a question I had to answer for this panel, learning, right? Yeah. And so. Yes, it will, because, I mean, it already, how can I put it, I already knew that I felt much more confident that I could, in a circumstance where people were less willing to be innovative, um, less willing to give up control to try something new, 
that I actually did have a, a significant pedagogy or pedagogical understanding beneath my feet, that I was doing things based on as much evidence as I could find, but pushing the envelope, and that that was as good as anybody else could do, that that I'm not, I, I didn't, my whole career has not been as an academic, and I used to have a sense that it was other people who would be the ones to lead these big projects, and and I'd have my say. As you know, I tend to have my say in things. Um, but that I wasn't, I wasn't absolutely sure that I had enough of the skills and, and understanding to be able to uh, take on something de novo and potentially sometimes by myself. And I learned that from Nazem in the medical education world that I could do that. And in the conversation this afternoon about that has made, you know, has made me realize that yes, I did go I did go out into the world, into a new circumstance, and that I've carried that on. And I'm probably able to do a whole lot more than I would have had I not had the experience in Nazem.